Hello sixth graders, today we're going to learn about fractions and decimals. Um, we're going to learn how to write fractions as decimals and also how to write mixed numbers as decimals. Here's some vocab that we will want to know as we're going through this lesson. The first one is terminating decimals. These are decimals whose digits end and you can see some examples there. They have, they stop. Repeating decimals on the other hand are decimals whose digits have a pattern and does not end. It keeps repeating, since, hence the name repeating decimals. So the example there is um, 0.3333, and it's going to keep going forever. When we have a decimal like that, we use bar notation. This indicates that a number pattern repeats indefinitely, so that bar goes over the part of the decimal that repeats, like they have in that example there. Or it might be something like, which means it keeps going... 252525 and forever. Something to think about as we are going here is that our decimal system is based on powers of 10. 10, 100,000, same thing after the decimal, tenths, hundredth, thousands. So think about how will this help us when we're converting between fractions and decimals. Remember over here, everything in front of the decimal is our whole number. Um, that decimal point, we use the word and, and then everything that's after the decimal is part. It's part of a whole number. So when we are writing either fractions or decimals, we are going to write what we read using the place value. So our first one here, seven tenths. As a fraction, this first number here, the seven, that tells us the top of our fraction. The tenths, that tells us the bottom number of our fraction. And if we write that as a decimal, think about where the tenths place is in our number. That's the first spot after the decimal. That's where the seven's going to go. So the seven goes right after the decimal in the tenths place. Remember to put a zero in front of the decimal. So you're just writing exactly what we are reading. 32 hundredths. Okay. So again, the 32, that's going to tell us our numerator, our top number. Hundredths, that tells us our denominator. And then as a decimal, again, 32 is going to end in the hundredths place, the first spot after the, or the second spot, sorry, after the decimal. So 32 hundredths ends in the second spot after the decimal. 265 thousandths as a fraction. Well, the 265, again, that's going to be our numerator. The thousandths then tells us our denominator. And in our place value chart, the thousandths is the third spot after the decimal. So that's where the number needs to end. And since it's a three-digit number, we just write it as we see it. 265 thousandths. Now, it's not always as easy as um, reading the number like that and being able to write the fraction. So here is one of the methods that we can use. So first, um, use our place value. So we can convert the denominator to tens, hundredths, or thousandths. Because then so once we have it as like tenths, then we can write it as we see it or read it. So first, the steps are here for us. Change the denominator multiply the numerator by the same number, and then write it as a decimal. So 3 fifths, well, I know that I can multiply 5 times 2 to get to 10, which would make it the tenths. Um, and then whatever I do to the bottom of the fraction, I'm just going to do to the top in order to keep it an equivalent fraction. So 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 2 is 10. 6 tenths then tells me that the 6 needs to end in the tenths place, so here is what it would look like as a decimal. 1 and 4 25ths. For now, um, I'm going to ignore the whole number and just focus on that 4 25ths, figuring out how to write that as a decimal. So thinking to myself, 25, I can't multiply into 10. Can it multiply into 100? Yep, if we multiply it by 4. Again, then we're also going to do the same thing to the top. So 4 times 4 is 16. And 25 times 4 is 100. So now we have 1 and 16 over 100, or 1 and 16 hundredths. So when I write this, using my place value chart that I have over here, the 1 goes in the 1's place, 
We've got our decimal because the whole numbers go in front of the decimal fractions and the parts go after. 16 hundredths, it needs to end in the hundredths place. That's what our decimal would look like. So if we can convert the bottom to 10 hundred thousandths, that's going to be um, our easiest way to convert it into a decimal. So always check and start with that first. Now when we can't make the bottom number 10 hundred or a thousand, that's when we have to move on to this second method, which is to divide. So we can write any fraction as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. Okay, top divided by bottom, which we set it up like this, denominator on the outside, numerator on the inside. You are going to end up having to add decimals and zeros because we are making a decimal here. Um, and we stop when we get a remainder of zero or if we find that it's going to be a repeating decimal. So our example here, three fourths. Again, you're taking numerator divided by the denominator. And if we were to set that up using our division bracket, the numerator goes on the inside, denominator goes on the outside. You'd have to add a decimal and some zeros here. Now we can also use our calculator by entering it in as three divided by four, which would give us this decimal. Next one, three eighths. Eight can't multiply into 10 hundred or thousand. So we're going to do law and division. Numerator goes on the inside. Um, denominator goes on the outside. Okay. And again, you could also use your calculator and you would enter it in as three divided by eight. And when we do that, whether we use the long division method okay, or the calculator method, if we enter it as three divided by eight, we are going to get 0 0.375 or 375 thousandths. That is it for converting fractions into decimals. Make sure to have your notes in class.